Hey, Brad Lancaster here, author of the books Rainwater Harvesting for Drylands and Beyond and the website HarvestingRainwater.com. Today, I want to show you some of the amazing benefits of using rainwater in your evaporative cooler. The great thing about rainwater, known as sweet water around the world, is it has no salt in it. So if you use rainwater in your evaporative cooler, you never have to change your cooling pads because they never get the salt buildup like they do when you use city water or well water. Okay, I'm gonna change the camera uh, to point of view and show you more. Okay, so we've got here is two sections of evaporative cooling pads. Got a section of brand new pad and one that's three years old uh, after being taken out from an evaporative cooler that is receiving municipal or city water. Check out how much salt has built up on this cooler pad. And it only lasted three years. We had to change it out because it had so much of this intense salt buildup. And this thing, it's a, it's like a freaking brick. It's really heavy, okay? Whereas this, super light, okay? And clean as whistle, brand new. This is the evaporative cooler in my, um, the, the evaporative cooler of mine that's receiving only rainwater. This cooler pad is over 12 years old. Now it looks beat up, because it is, because the pad here is facing the sun to the east, okay? So the sun has worn down the pad. But there is no salt buildup on this at all, okay? So we've got another couple decades of life in this, easy, all right? Compare to three years of city water going over an evaporative cooler, you know, from my rental unit to this one, just receiving rainwater. Fantastic, okay? Never have to change those pads. And if you look at all this salt bill up on the, uh, on the cooler pad, you think, God, well, you know, what's municipal or well water doing to my pipes? What's it doing to my appliances? And then you think rainwater, what's it doing? Ooh, everything is so clean and lovely. Okay, so now I got the cooler running. Um, got the rainwater in there and you can see it but I basically got a pump that uh, pumps the water up to the top of the cooler and a pump internal to the cooler is where I have the pump and the uh, water then drips down over the pad there's a fan on the inside so it gets air moving through the pad and then the uh, due to evaporation of that rainwater that um, creates the bulk of the cooling and then the fan pulls that cold uh, air into, into the house. So it works really good. All right, so for more sweet tips on how you can make the most of your rainwater and uh, you can get an extended life with your various appliances uh, by using rainwater and so forth, um, be sure to check out my books, Rainwater Harvesting for Dry Lands and Beyond, the full color editions, available direct from me at deep discount at my website, harvestingrainwater.com, where I've got lots of videos, including some videos uh, that go more on the topic that I covered today. Uh, and uh, I will also show you, if you're still interested, um, some more extras on this system. So keep watching. Otherwise, go to the books on the website. And thanks for watching. Okay. So um, this uh, evaporative cooler that runs off rainwater was made locally by Bill Cunningham uh, at Southwest Solar. He calls these uh, evaporative coolers his solar chill coolers. And uh, you can get them hooked up so that the rainwater goes up to your cooler um, and via a pump, but uh, I'm, I'm a little quirky, I do it differently. So I actually carry my rainwater up in a bucket because um, I, I like to keep myself moving. It's like, uh, gets me to exercise more, gets me to check out the system more and whatnot. So the way it basically works is this here and lift the bucket up. Can't do this one handed holding the camera and I pour the bucket in, okay? And uh, that bucket of water will easily, it depends on the weather, how humid it is, but can easily ask, last me three hours or so. But um, if I don't want to be 
um, bringing water up every three hours. I can fill this. <laughs> Looks a little jerry rig. It is, but I like it. A little stainless steel cooking pot to go with my stainless steel cooler. Um, and basically just slip this out, lift this up, can pour the rainwater in. And you can see there's um, some debris from the tree above me will get in when I lift the lid up or whatnot. So, um, sometimes there can be a little deb debris in the rainwater. So I have this little um, tea bag screen uh, that uh, keeps the debris from going into the cooler itself. Works pretty good. <laughs> Okay, but you can have things looking way more slick and conventional if you want um, with a, uh, a rainwater cooler. Um, but I want to show you some other key things about cooler placement uh, with coolers with rainwater or, or city water that enhances their performance. So here, um, uh, let me kind of back up. I have got it on the roof of my garage. And the great thing about being on the roof is I'm above the fence line, so there's more breeze and whatnot. And because I'm off uh, the ground down below, uh, it is 10 degrees cooler up here on the roof than it is on the ground. So it's nice having the cooler here, okay? Um, but having a cooler on a roof can be tough for access. So I've got this super easy ladder up to um, this roof, which is a little terrace from which I can see street life and whatnot. Um, and I even like to sleep up here on some summer nights. I'll link to some of that in the show notes below. Um, so uh, I get better performance from this cooler being on the roof, uh, but not in the exposed part of the roof. Notice how it is under the shade of this part of the roof overhang, okay? And as the sun gets higher in the sky, you know, by noon, it'll be in full shade, and all afternoon when the sun's coming from the west, it'll be in full shade. And that's another key thing. So uh, the cooler is protected from the hottest sun of the day, which is to the west there, by the building. And in the morning hours, like this, um, this great tree helps shade the cooler uh, and makes things even cooler still. And one of the things I like to do with this cooler is uh, at night, I will um, typically put in just one bucket of water, okay? When, just before I go to sleep. And that will easily last me till midnight or so. And by midnight, the outside temperature has dropped enough that I don't need the water for that evaporative cooling any longer. Just the nighttime air coming from this height is delightful. So in some ways, this kind of acts like an attic fan. Um, and that way too, I don't build up humidity in the house. Uh, so really love it. Um, and I want to point out too that uh, these evaporative coolers, here I'm in Tucson, Arizona, uh, we're in a dry climate, but in the summer monsoon, summer rainy season, things can really get much more humid. But that doesn't happen until July. So right now we're in end of May, uh, and also the whole month of June are typically very dry, so they're ideal times for the evaporative cooler. Because with the dry climate and the low humidity, these things work fantastic. Whereas once the humidity um, jumps up, uh, then uh, you, you get more clammy inside, you know, because it just adds to the humidity. But one great thing that uh, this design of the solar cooler does is it's got a little timer on the inside of the house. So uh, the pump is only run uh, for 15 seconds every 15 minutes. And you can adjust that, you know, according to your weather and your cooler and your, your various comfort desires. But what it does, instead of having water running continuously over the pad, um, it dries out uh, a little bit between those pulses. And right now, if you compare to a view I showed earlier, the pad is drier than it was before. Still got some moisture, but not as wet. Uh, and as a result, the uh, there's less humidity in the house. So with this little tweak that Bill Cunningham did with his coolers, um, these evaporative coolers uh, don't make the interior of your home as humid as maybe conventional cooler. Nice, nice little advantage there. 
Oh, hey, and one other thing, this tree that is helping shade the cooler and make the cooler cooler um, is uh, this tree is freely irrigated with passively harvested rainwater plus actively harvested rainwater in my rainwater tanks right there from which I get the rainwater that also goes into the cooler. But these tanks overflow um, there into the root zone of this tree. And I also, the gray water from my kitchen sink, which is rainwater before I use it, also from those tanks, uh, the water that goes down the kitchen sink drain goes into the root zone of this tree as well. I will link to, um, make links in the show notes below that give you more information on all that. But look at that, rain irrigated, love it. I'm gonna get some tasty edible mesquite pods uh, from this uh, flower that's been pollinated. Yum, yum, yum.